Welcome to the ITX build. In this three part series we'll show you everything you need to create the most ultimate mini 4K PC that is just as comfortable on your desk as it is in the living room. In this video, part one, we're going to show you everything you need to actually put this computer together. It's all well and good having a list of parts, but unless you know why they're there, it can make it a little bit hard to appreciate what you're actually building. And to kick us off, let's start with the enclosure itself, the Corsair Obsidian Series 250D. Now this case is what I would describe as good looking. It's very simplistic, there's not really too much to it other than it being a box. But it's very well made, it looks very nice, and more importantly it can accommodate a full size GPU, full size power supply, so you're not really going to have to compromise too much on the sort of things you want to put in here. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Corsair who did supply the case and other components for this build, including their new magnetic levitation fans. These promise to be very high performance while making a minimal amount of noise. I've actually used three of these, although I did actually originally intend to use a 140mm, but due to cooler restrictions I ended up using three 120mm fans. Moving on to the motherboard, and we've got the Asus Z170i Pro Gaming Mini ITX board. Now this motherboard actually represents decent value for money because you're pretty much paying for all the features that you want and you're not getting the stuff that you probably won't ever use. The motherboard also matches my red and black theme and ports wise has all the ports that I would ever want including many USB 3.0 and 3.1. A massive thank you to Asus who did also provide parts for this build. Now of course a motherboard is no good without a processor and here's where you have a choice. An i7 6700K or like we've got here, the i5-6600K. Now, generally speaking, unless you're doing any high intensity rendering or things like that, an i5 is going to give you all the power you want, especially if you overclock it. A massive thank you to Intel for providing this chip. In terms of CPU cooling, we've gone for the H80i V2 from Corsair. While we won't be able to fit both fans in, we're still going to get stellar performance and have a system that not only runs cool, but is pretty damn quiet as well. And thanks to the Corsair Link functionality, we can free up a couple of fan headers while still maintaining full control of the fans. But the real heart of the system is without a doubt the Asus GTX 1080 Strix. Now let me get a massive disclaimer out there right now. This thing is massive and took a great deal of effort to fit in this case. It's doable, but it did take a very long time to get it to fit, so be warned. But if you ignore all these warnings, you're going to get a card that is insanely fast, runs games at 4K without an issue, and is a real joy to use. Now in terms of RAM, we've gone for two 8GB sticks of Corsair Vengeance LED. Not only does this DDR4 run at 3000MHz, but it has light bars on the top that light up in white or red depending on the colour you go for. But we've gone for two 8GB sticks because 8GB itself just wouldn't really be enough in certain titles. On the storage front we've gone SSD only with a Corsair Neutron XTi. These SSDs are very quick and do a very good job of booting up Windows very quickly as well as running games with very small load times. I would definitely suggest that you go for a larger size than 240 if this is going to be your main drive, but if you do want to add an additional form of storage then this should be enough. Now in order to provide juice to all these components we're going to need a power supply and the one we've got here is Corsair's RM850i. Now it's really important with a power supply to get one that doesn't run very loud and having one like this one that actually doesn't have any fans that spin until you get to a medium high load means that you're getting a much quieter system when you want it, so when you're on the web browsing and things like that. But because of its full modularity it's going to be very easy to fit all the cables and only have the things you want. So that's it on the hardware front, don't of course forget that you'll need a copy of Windows before you can actually do anything, but there are a couple other things I'd recommend picking up. The first one would be a gamepad and wireless receiver, the next one would be a Microsoft all-in-one media keyboard or similar. I picked up this one in a Black Friday sale and it's been an absolute godsend because it enables me to actually log into the PC and open games without having to use some big bulky solution. But if you do want to use this as a desktop PC then having a decent mechanical keyboard is a real help and the one I use day to day is the Corsair K70 RGB Rapid Fire. In terms of mouse, I use the Corsair M65 Pro as I find it really nice to use for first person shooters as you've got a sniper button on the left 
is a little bit on the heavier side, which sort of suits my style, but there are plenty of good mice out there, and the shopping actually should be quite difficult because there are so many to choose from. In terms of headset, I still haven't found what I would consider to be the perfect headset. The one I'm using at the moment is the HyperX Cloud Revolver, but I haven't yet finished the review of this, and I'm not entirely sure how long I'm going to be using it for. It's very comfortable, but it's slightly different design, does have a couple of caveats, but those will be available in the full review coming very soon. It's HyperX Premium headset though, and if you don't want to spend quite as much, I can highly recommend their HyperX Cloud 2. And so, there we have it. All the parts you need to create a portable mini 4K gaming PC that should be able to run all games at 1440p or higher at 60 frames a second. The whole point of this for me was something that I can have upstairs, use as a desktop workstation, and then bring down and take into the lounge. But of course, parts are only one third of the story. If you do want to see how this thing was put together and how it actually performs in games, then you can find those videos coming very, very shortly. And as soon as they become available, I will put them in the card in the top right hand corner of your screen. If you do want to learn more about any of the parts featured in this video, then you can find Amazon links listed down in the description, where it will have full description, and of course, you will be able to buy them. If you have any questions, hit me up on at PCCentric on Twitter. But otherwise, a massive thank you for you guys for checking out this video. If you've liked it, please smash that like button because it lets other people know it's a video worth watching. But likewise, if it wasn't, hit the dislike button. Once again, a massive thank you to Asus, Intel, and Corsair for providing the parts for this build and subscribe for more videos just like this. A massive thank you once again, and I'll hopefully see you in part two.